Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back in for another episode of Heavy Rain. In the last episode, you can tell that things are snowballing at this point. We know that the murders usually take place after six inches of rain, and I think we're creeping up on almost three inches already. From the trials that Ethan has been doing, I feel like every single video, it's just deeper and deeper. And the last video that we saw, Sean was actually covered all the way up to pretty much his shoulders in rain. So I feel like after another couple trials, he's just gonna be completely underwater. I don't know if we're gonna make it in time. I feel like we really need to do these last three trials very quickly. And the next one kind of scares me because the origami lizard said something about what are you willing to sacrifice in order to save your sons? I'm scared we might have to kill somebody else or do something that would really put Ethan in a really bad spot. Even if he gets Sean out of all of these crazy trials, he could be in a lot of trouble with the law after. He's already a major, major suspect in this case. Blake and Norman are currently pursuing Ethan because they think that he is the one. After Grace's horrible testimony about how he's seeing bodies drowning in his nightmares and he's having these moments of blackout where Ethan went to confide in her after he had woken up and was going on and on about bodies drowning and rain and all of these really horrible things that could be linked up to being the origami killer. I still don't think that Ethan could possibly be the origami killer. I just don't think so. Not after playing his character, not after seeing what he is doing in these trials, I just, I highly doubt that he is the origami killer. I could be completely blindsided by the end of this. There are a couple things that weirdly add up with Ethan's timeline, and I don't understand why he keeps waking up with these dogs, the same origami that the killer is putting into the victim's hands. So there's a lot that is piling up against Ethan. None of it is sound evidence against him being the origami killer. So I don't love that Blake is so aggressively pursuing Ethan like this. It kind of makes me feel like his anger is so over the top and so crazy that maybe he is dealing with a guilty conscience of some sort. And Blake could potentially be the one that is doing all of this. But in the same breath, Blake isn't very intelligent. He doesn't come off as super intelligent to me. I feel like he's grasping onto things as he can go and maybe just has some very intense anger issues, but if he is the mastermind behind all of this, I would be wildly surprised, but it could make sense why he has such severe anger towards everything that's going on in this case. So I'm expecting for us to see Ethan being pursued by the police in this episode. I feel like they're gonna be on his tail, but I'm sure that being a very heavy decision-based game, hopefully we get our QTEs right and see what happens in the rest of this storyline. I'm nervous about the lizard trial. I have a feeling it's gonna be just as awful as the other two. I'm also nervous that Ethan is being heavily pursued by the police. It could be a day where we see Norman and Blake catch up with Ethan and take him into custody, possibly. As far as Shelby goes, there are some red flags there that I've talked about last episode with him that just kind of gave me the EBs that just kind of put him on the radar for me to be the potential killer if we're playing the killer right now. I just feel like if the killer is one of the main protagonists that we have seen and played, it could potentially be him or Blake. Blake's demeanor is obviously what puts him high on my list for me, but Everything with Shelby is just kind of awkward coincidences where he has a typewriter and he's more old style with his car, but I think that that could just be his aesthetic, which is actually really nice. I enjoyed walking around his home office. It's very clean and it's very private investigatory. We also got some clues that he was a former cop and part of the military in his previous past. So I thought that was a little bit interesting that his apartment was very decorated in all of that stuff. So it makes me wonder if he just didn't wanna work for the police station anymore and decided to pursue this private detective life, which people change careers all the time, it makes sense. Or maybe if something happened in the police department that caused him to get fired and take this job as a private investigator. But either way, that doesn't really mean anything for Shelby. I just think that it's an interesting 
interesting part of him. And since he is so high on my suspect list, I feel like I'm just kind of diving a little bit deeper into who Shelby is and now who Blake is. So let's see where the crazy world of heavy rain takes us today. Golf. Thursday, 7 a.m. It's early. 2.992 inches of rain. It's so dark. Early morning golf. His eyes all scraped up from the fight at uh, Kramer's house. Yeah, where's Lauren? Get Lauren in the dark on this one. I'll pick her up from her place later on. Oh my, I'm getting, getting very cozy in here. The most exclusive golf club in town. <laughs> Strange place for an appointment. Yeah, it is very weird. I want to hear all of his thoughts before I meet up with whoever Big that stick, is. little ball. Never could see the point of this game. I like golf. I've been to Top Golf and I've played some golf. I'm really bad at golf, but I feel like it's still fun. Well, well, an old friend. Oh, the bodyguard. I wonder what we're going to talk about. Okay, so I'm getting the gist that he asked him here for a meeting. And it's Kramer's dad. Interesting. Probably heard us nice shot. beat up his son. Thank you. For his Please son's come bodyguards. In, Mr. Shelby. Would you care for a coffee? Oh, no thanks. Do you play? I tried once. But I think the owner of the course is still looking for me. <laughs> it's an interesting sport. It requires strength, but also a cool head and absolute precision. Would you care to hit a few balls with me? There's no danger of damaging the greens here. Okay. Take off your jacket and grab a club. He seems very thrilled about this. What an interesting meeting place. Just be like, come play golf with me after you just scared my son, or I guess we didn't really scare his son. So I don't really understand the whole Kramer thing. From what I understand, Kramer was the last one to see that boy and put him into his limo and told the cops this whole story about how he was lost and he was helping him and his father ended up showing up and getting him off the hook with probably money or who knows. I mean, people that are this powerful, they usually have some sort of pull um, with the police department for whatever reason. But I'm unsure why he would ask us here for a meeting, I guess, because he wants to make sure that we leave his son alone. But if his son isn't guilty, then why all of this? So I'm thinking that maybe Kramer could be guilty for being the origami killer or that that one situation looked really bad. And he's just trying to clear his son's name because his family name is is behind his son's name. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. It's very strange interaction already. But let's pick up a club and play with this the guy. The balls are in that basket. Okay. Nothing to think about. Grab one of these. The most important thing is to grip the club correctly. When you feel ready, you swing. He's not gripping it correctly, but that's okay. He said he doesn't like golf or understand it. Gosh, it's not a baseball. I'm gonna have a baseball bat. Oh, that was very light. Well, it's only your first ball. <laughs> you should try to strike it a little harder next time. I'm assuming you didn't invite me here just to play golf, Mr. Kramer. I hear you've been asking questions about my son. That's right. I want to know if Gordy is linked to the origami killer case in any way. Nothing to say about that? Or I guess maybe it's like bowling, you can't talk through someone's swing. Here we go. 
My son had nothing to do with that sordid case. Well, then he has nothing to fear from my investigation. You have no business investigating my son. I told you, he had nothing to do with it. With all due respect, Mr. Kramer, it's up to me to decide who I want to investigate. I'm an influential man, Mr. Sheldon, and I pay very well for loyalty. Are you trying to buy me? Let's just say I'm trying to show you where your interest lies. How much do you want to leave my son alone? Yeah. I think you misunderstood me. I don't play that game. Don't go near my son, Mr. Sheldon. If you do, you'll regret it. Have a nice day, Mr. Kramer. If he's killing kids, then we need to do something about it. Like, sorry, but... Something weird happened in that limo with that kid. If he had nothing on him at all, then this conversation wouldn't have happened. He knows something. I don't think that Kramer... Like, his son could have done it, though. He's so disturbed. Like, he, yes, he's very disturbed, which, I mean, sometimes that could lead to all of the craziness that Ethan's going through, and I don't know. I just don't feel like he's intelligent enough. He definitely has enough time to set up all the trials and do all of that and make elaborate plans like this, but I don't know. He just doesn't seem very smart. He just seems disturbed. <laughs> the way they were running. <sighs> All right, so we're here. Lizard trial. Look, there's like snakes on the floor. What are these? Porcelain lizards? They look new. Out of place with the rest of this old beat up stuff. For sure. Shake it. Okay. Oh, I can break it? Okay. Nothing in there. Fire. There's been a fire in here. Oh. Everything is all burned up. That's why it looks so crazy. Still feeling weak. I can hardly stand. Yeah, he looks like he's in pain. The pain's coming back. Drugs are beginning to wear off. Dang. Where are you, Sean? All right, let's check this one. Oh, there's something in this one. A key. Okay. There's another one over here. Should I keep... Oh, I can't do anything about that one. 9711 Marble Street. It's the right place, but what am I supposed to do in this dump? I guess I can't mess with any of the other lizards. Okay, well, let's go into the... Oh, it's green. The same as the one we smashed for the key. This person has a lot of time on their hands. To set all of this up. Oh, there's something on the desk there. Looks like a iPad or something. Okay. I'm gonna look around first before I mess with whatever that is on the desk. Just because I'm... Oh, can I? Okay, I do have time to look around. I'm just like freaked out about this. There's nothing in here. I guess I have to sit down first, huh? Nothing. 
Nothing is in here. Oh, there's a bathroom. We're not thinking any thoughts right now? And there's nothing in here? What are we about to do in this apartment? Okay. Oh, there's like a gas thing over there. Maybe it was used for the stove, though. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. What? If you succeed, you will get your reward. My finger? What is this? What? The pain's gonna be intense. Yeah. We gotta find some way to reduce it. Reduce the pain. Uh, Cut off a finger? No way. No, I... What? Was this here before? What is that, a saw? Oh my god. No, 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 no. There has to be something better in here. What was the instrument option? Gotta find a sharp object, something that'll make a clean cut. I don't want to have to start hacking away at it. <sighs> what is that? A piece of glass? <sighs> I might just be able to get through this if I make the right choices. There's got to be a way to do this. What else is on the floor? A rod? Might be able to like... You have oh, the gas tank. He's probably going to heat up the rod and be able to, like, cauterize his wound. Dang. This is crazy. Holy crap. All right, wait, what was in that cabinet? I saw something in here. Some whiskey? Can we take the whiskey? What? Um, refuse, give up, no choice. I have to go through with it. I have no choice, for Sean's sake. It definitely looked like there was a flask in there. That would help. <gasps> There's a butcher knife in the wall. Do I lay this on the table for later? God, this is you awful. Four minutes left. All right, let's go search on the flask that was in here. Now that we can pick up more stuff. Okay, we'll take that for sure. The butcher knife seems to be the best option so far. I am gonna go look in the bathroom real quick though. What was on the floor over there? Are there meds in here? What is that? Meds, okay. Here, let's put that on the table. I can't believe that this is happening right now. I'm kind of relieved though. Five minutes. I've got five minutes to cut off my finger. Gotta decide now. That it's not murdering somebody else? Like, this is awful. This is so, like, saw-like. That could be actually good. You have three minutes and 30 seconds. Because there's, like, an axe on the floor. An axe would be too much. I mean, an axe might be fine, but the clippers, like, it would be a short... And the butcher knife would also like if you don't if it's not sharp these pliers are probably the best option that we have right now what's in the sink scissors oh nope put those back no 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 not scissors not scissors All right, well, it looks like we can maybe put more stuff there. So let's put the butcher knife in case I chicken out with the pliers. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do this. My stomach hurts. Okay, I think those are our best options. The piece of glass on the floor you doesn't seem great. Three minutes left. Whatever that, oh, the saw. No, 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 not the saw. Definitely not the saw. I need a second because my stomach hurts. Okay. 
I think we have everything we need to do this. I don't want to refuse. I don't want to get up. I don't want to leave. We have to do it for Sean. All right, let's get started. We only have like two minutes left. My stomach feels a little better now. Alcohol. Drink it. Drink all of it. Drink more. You have two minutes Jeez. and 30 seconds left. I'm just gonna keep drinking. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, let's put it down because we need, like, what if it's making him drunk or something? It looks like everything's blurry. Oh no, that might have been a mistake. Um, I don't know what the meds are. I don't know if I should do the knife or the pliers. I think the pliers would be easier because then it's just like a quick... Oh my god, this is... And what are these meds? What is that? I guess like for after, but we should probably take it now. What is that? Oh, to like sterilize. Okay, that was a good option. I thought it was just like antibiotics or something. Okay, I think we're... I think we're ready. Gotta keep a clear head. Everything's gonna be okay. I'll you be able to get through this if I just think out exactly left. what I have to do. Yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing. We, it has to be fast. Do it fast. You won't feel it. Won't feel a thing. Yeah, it'll be fine. Maybe just one more drink. Maybe just one more. Just because I don't want to do this. I'm ready. I'm going to do the pliers. I think it's the better option. God. Oh, we're deep breathing. I was not breathing. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that they did that. Try it. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Mm. Okay. Oh my god. I don't know why it's failing. I think I have to keep pressing it really fast. Oh. I'm going to run out of time. We got this. We got this. Uh. Uh. You have one minute left. Uh. 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 <laughs> <sighs> okay. Carterize it. Carterize it so you don't bleed out. Oh. Man, I couldn't even imagine. My knees, like, my knees hurt so bad. They're so weak right now. Oh. Oh, that has to hurt so bad. Jeez. Under the desk. Under the desk? I did what I had to, Sean. I love you. I love you. Oh my gosh. Oh, man. It was under the desk this entire time. Oh, underneath the floorboard. We never would have found that. Ooh.
All of that for a video of our son dying. Oh my god, his head is like barely under above water. We're not gonna make it. This is the third trial. How are we gonna make it two more? We have the we have enough to go off of Roosevelt. Look for storm drains on that on that street with those starting numbers. was insane thinking back now on like the first and the second trial that was nothing compared to what we just had to go through that was nothing that's affirmative lieutenant we're in position perfect are they outside of where we are right signal. now is that clear we nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. They followed Lucky us that here. Patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. Madison followed us here too. Might but be our saving like grace. Marsh comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? We want to get her out? No, stand down. So she followed him here. She's probably curious about what he's doing. Because every time that he comes back to the motel, he's injured. To the point of almost death sometimes. She's about to freak out and see that we're missing a finger in here. The police. Yeah. They staked out the building where Ethan is. She saw it too. All right, I think it's this one because that's his green car, right? She's going inside. She lives there. Lost just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police, they're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. Shit. What's he up to in there? Both of our vehicles Wait are outside. For a go on my word. Come on, think of something. Okay, we need think to walk around fast. and think of something. Um, the window? The solution. There's got to be a solution. He looks bad. Wait, what's this? What happened? What is this? Yeah, and I hope they don't come inside. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. I think we're trying to get the window open. Can we both fit out of there? It looks kind of small. Oh no, it's a big window. Shit! It's too oh high. no, I wasted so much time. Okay. The window's too high. I'll never manage to pull myself up. Okay, well, there's stuff to stand on in here, right? What's this? Oh, yeah, let's move this. Move it. I feel like they're getting impatient. This is so stressful. No, he's coming. Ready on my go. No! Stay here, Jaden. No! Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door. Hold your positions. Come it's on. A go. Go, go, go. Get, get out the window. Oh, God. No, it's stuck. Okay, come on. Push come on, Ethan let's out. Go, this way. go. Go. Okay, we got this. We got this. Help Ethan out. Yeah, look at his knees. Oh, my God. 
Oh, okay, they're inside. They're going inside. He's gonna know. <gasps> no! Hey, you, don't move! I'll shoot! No, Come just on. keep going. Quick. Go. I can't. Hands in the air! Come on, we have to go. We have to. Stand behind the dumpster. Don't shoot us. There's a man and a woman exiting the alley. We've got the cops on our ass. Shit. No way it's out. Come on, we can go. We can. Everybody downstairs. They're in the alley. Follow okay. them. Subway. The let's subway. go. Yep. Let's go the subway. Beeline. Beeline. Jeez. Just have out of it. I'm dead weight. I won't be able to carry him for long. Oh man. This is terrible. Shit. They spotted us. We need to move while we still have a chance. Okay, go, 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 go. I think we made it. Oh man, that was so stressful. I feel like they were like right behind us that entire time. All right, where do we go? Um, platforms. Ethan. Exit. Ethan, what's the matter? Oh my god. We gotta keep going. He's really passing out from the pain. Ethan, Ethan, they're coming. Okay, down that way. Got it. Um, or maybe not. I guess the um crowd. The crowd. They might lose us in the crowd. Yeah, possibly. Ethan's going downhill fast. For he seems sure. to be having trouble. Okay. I'm can so we... tired. Oh, we can't I get have through to there. Keep going. Come on, girl. Can we go through this one? Oh, we have a ticket. Okay. I thought we would have to like buy one first. God damn it, where are you going, motherfucker? Oh my god. Ow! Hey, watch it, man! Please! Stop or I'll shoot! Does he see us? Oh, okay. Come on, we have to keep going. They've already blocked all the exits from the station. Yeah, we have to get on a train. Think of something fast. Anything. Why am I risking my life for him? The cops are after him. He's probably dangerous. They probably, yeah, blocked all the exits. They're oh, they're coming. All sides. Only a few yards away now. What happens if we go on the train tracks? That was like one of our we options. We can't just abandon Ethan now. There's got to be a way. I don't know what to do. I don't want to get down here, but... Quick! Quick! Ethan, quick! He's gonna hit us! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was super unfortunate timing for the game to crash. I feel like my game's been crashing a lot, and I'm not sure how I can fix that, or if it's just like a known issue with heavy rain. <laughs> But I'm scared because I don't know where it's going to pick us back up at. I hope that it's just like right back at the train tracks. Last time it crashed be like in the beginning of a new chapter, so it was fine. I've never had it crash in the middle of a chapter, so uh, I don't know what's about to happen. Okay, so we're back here, which they've already blocked all the exits from the station. Now we know that we need to get on the train tracks pretty much. I can't just abandon Ethan now. They're okay. So come on, quick, let's get down. Quick, Ethan, quick, he's gonna hit us. Hopefully he doesn't crash again. Oh my god. Come on, we have to hurry. <sighs> Holy crap. All right, we need to go. It's Get out of the way! <laughs> okay, they lost us. Yeah, they're like freaking out over there. Okay, I'm so glad that it started me back at the platform and not like all the way back in the beginning of Madison's chapter. Man, my palms are sweating. <laughs> Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. 
it's so unfortunate that they were so quick to just pin this on Ethan without any further investigation or bringing him in. It looks really bad that we had to run from the cops, but we have to save Sean. If we would have gotten caught and spent time in the police station while rain is accumulating, Sean wouldn't have made it. I'm glad that we got out of that situation, but at the same time, now we can't answer any questions or get a possible alibi for any of the previous origami killer murders, which we probably have. We were probably with Grace during some of that time. We might have been in a six month coma during part of that too. So it's unfortunate that we had to escape them like that. But if we got caught, Sean's life would have been further in, damage, in danger than it already is. It's just, it really sucks. Now Madison's like an accessory. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. You followed me. I wanted to know. You were all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? Confide, break, evade, confide. She deserves to know what's happening at this point. I... Sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards is the bodies. The bodies in the water. What? Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I'd love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice. Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own. It's unfortunate that Ethan, Ethan really believes that he is the origami killer. I'm not sure what this bodies in the water after is. If it is just a part of his blackouts. It's just an unfortunate thing that links up to the origami killer. But I don't think that it's Ethan still. I don't know. I go back and forth. I'm on the fence about if it's really him or not because... I mean, it does make sense. He has motive. I've talked about this before, how he could just be testing himself to... See if he's good enough to save Sean, if he's a good enough father. He obviously feels like he has failed as a father. 
But why would you take so many other victims before taking Sean? And it seems like the dads are always missing, so maybe they have tried to complete the trials and failed in some form. I don't know. Sometimes I do still feel like Ethan could potentially be the one to just blindside me and be the actual killer. He has everything against him. But that is another reason why I don't think that it's him. Is because the game wants me to think so hard that it is him. I just don't think he has it in him to do all of this. I think he's just a troubled guy and he's had an unfortunate past. I'll find you, Sean. I swear I'll find you. I don't have much time. I've got to find my son before it's too late. Yeah. The box. I have to open another origami figure. No police. I feel like it's only a matter of time before they find the motel. Because he probably registered, like, under his name. He didn't think when he checked in here. I mean, maybe he's smart enough that he didn't, but... It's interesting that we can keep looking in there. <laughs> she did get us some food, though. I wonder if we can eat. We can go to the bathroom? Probably... I haven't done that in a while. I just don't think it could be Ethan. I keep like going back to not believing that just because I think it's what I want to believe. I don't think that he is disturbed enough to cause this, these kind of trials. I mean, these are pretty heinous things that we're doing. I thought that driving the wrong way through traffic was bad. But the last trial, I don't know. How much worse is it gonna get? It just keeps seeming like it's escalating more and more every time. All right, can't go in the shower. Is there anything in the fridge? No, it's empty. Let's see if we can eat some food and open the box. Nope, we're just going straight for the box. I don't blame him. What was the next one? I can't remember now. Kind of looked like a shark. Speaking of the last one, lizards, when they lose their limbs, they can usually grow them back. So the origami most definitely has to do with what the trial is. So... If this one's a shark, which I think it was because I remember him laying them all out and I remember the butterfly and the shark and I thought it was a rhino, but it was a bear. Those three like stood out to me. So I think he was just holding the gray shark. Sharks are aggressive. I can't think of anything else other than they're just aggressive. They're territorial. They kill. I don't know. I'm nervous about it. Are you prepared to kill someone to save your son? Kill him, send a picture, get your reward. That's what the gun's for. I struggle with this. I thought that maybe the last trial had to do with this and I told myself mentally that I wouldn't be able to do it. There's just no way that I could kill somebody else to save my son. I don't know who this guy is, what he is. It doesn't really matter, but I don't know. This could be one of the trials that I actually don't get through just because I, A, don't want Ethan to be in jail for the rest of his life, but I just don't want Ethan to be a killer. I don't want him to believe that he's a killer. I don't want him to think that he's a killer and I don't want him to kill somebody. I'm struggling with this one. And I thought that the last trial, are you willing to sacrifice or cause pain or what, however it was worded? I think it was sacrifice. 
in order to save your son. I thought that that one was going to have to do with killing. And I've already thought about it because of the wording of the last one. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that one. angry song your vodka sir thanks you look preoccupied if you don't mind my saying so problems with the investigation Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer not you I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Right, yeah, exactly what I was saying. Mars is not the origami killer. It just doesn't make any sense. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. <laughs> Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. How does he know us so well? I guess we come here pretty often. And I'm guessing he's talking about the drugs. See, I'm with Norman on this one. I just, it doesn't make any sense for it to be Ethan. Sure, it looks bad and it lines up and it's also kind of funny that we're on Mars right now, looking at Ethan Mars's stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I said it before too, like literally right before this scene that why would you kidnap your own son after you've already committed all of these other murders? It's just, it's very strange. Not sure. All right, let's look at the clues. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. Ooh, okay. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. Okay. Can I play it? Analyze? A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park. Mm. When in the opposite direction at 1637, that could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Chevrolet Malibu 83. I know I said before that like a big thing about it being an 83, was he off on the year? Probably not. These glasses are pretty, pretty cool. So I guess the car thing with Shelby isn't really a issue at all. I need to take that off of his red flag list because these airy glasses can obviously analyze things that normal looking at a tire track and analyzing it through a database can't do. These are high tech. So I don't think he could be off by the year by 30 years. I just feel like that is a long, that is a lot. That is a very big difference in 83 versus like a car that was made in the 50s. I think you would be able to tell, but.
All right, so. But let's go ahead and geo-analyze this. No data. Dang. All right, let's clear. Actually, let me look at one more thing in the clues. That was our only new clue, right? Ah, uh, pity we can't see the driver's face. Yeah. Analyze the car further. The car was stolen. Oh. Let's see. A certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it, but the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. September 14th, 2005. Okay. Can we locate it? Oh. Not even to like where it was stolen from? I guess that wouldn't really... That wouldn't really be anything. What's this on our left? What is this? ID card? Jackson Neville, AKA Mad Jack. Involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. Armed man, this dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. I mean, if he has that big of a rap sheet, then... I don't know if he's going to give us any answers. He obviously does sketchy dealings for a lot of people. <gasps> Our nose is bleeding. We're having drug withdrawals again. One last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in your walk. It's also interesting that we're sitting... Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh, no. Shit. It's... It's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All no. I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. No. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. Yeah. I know I can resist. I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. Jeez. What am I having to stop him? What is that? Alcohol? Yeah, drink some alcohol. It's also interesting that we're in a hotel room. Was the piano scene with the bartender all just part of the airy glasses? Oh, dang. Calm I down. need to get a grip. Give it some time to pass. Yeah, just let it pass. Let it go. Lay on the bed or something. Sit down. Looks like we're having an exorcism. Oh, man. No. Come on, we have to stay clean. There. So close. No. All I have to do is take it. Everything will be fine. No. Let's go into the bathroom. Let's go into the bathroom. Can he like wash his face? That helps, right? Washing your face. A shower. A cold shower. Cool yeah. Down. Shower. Go in the shower. With your clothes on. Whatever it takes. Jeez. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of curious what it would look like if we actually took the drugs. What kind of drugs is this guy on that it's causing nosebleeds like this after not having it, causing these heavy shakes? Like, what kind of drug is this that is causing all of this very intense behavior? I'm glad we got him to stop, though. Ludwig von Detox. Resist tryptocaine. Oh, is that its full name? Tryptocaine? It's kind of a cool name for a drug, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Trypto. Tryptocaine. Thursday, 11, 10 a.m., 3.332 inches. So we're definitely getting closer to 
three and a half inches already. Look at this store. Clocks and typewriters. I wonder. Manfred. Manfred. Anybody home? I wonder if we're going to try to find out who the typewriter belongs to. If he can actually like analyze it and see. Which. So the typewriter was the whole reason why I've been suspecting Shelby so hard. Now I am on the fence because I don't think that he would come to a typewriter store and with Lauren in tow to find out where the letterhead came from that is typing out all of these letters to the victim's families. I feel like Shelby would not put himself under the bus like that. I just feel like that would be really dumb on his part to do that. So now I'm suspecting Shelby a lot less after the car thing with Norman and now the typewriter situation. I'm just, I am starting to feel like I'm really on the wrong track with thinking that it was Shelby. Because he wouldn't just come here with her in store. Nothing much changed here. Just the dust and the clocks ticking on and on. So he's definitely been here before. And if the owner knows him, then he would know like who he's dealing with. And yeah, I don't think he would bring Lauren here. He would probably just come here by himself if he's the one writing the letters on his typewriter that I'm sure he gets serviced here. It was crazy to let her come with me. She's trying to help out, but she just gets in the way. I'll have to talk to her later. Yeah, <laughs> she gets in the way. Um... What was that meeting with Charles Kramer at the golf club really about? Why is he so worried about me investigating his son? Yeah, it does seem very strange. Like they're hiding something for sure. Oh, there's someone in here. Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Oh, so they know each other. Do you remember me? Scott? This is Scott. Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about 10 years, I ten guess. 10 years, wow. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. Well, how about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. So he quit. Uh, this is Lauren. Interesting. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Or at least so he Hello, says. Hello, young lady. Well, this this calls for a celebration. A celebration. Uh, just a thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Oh, I guess because they haven't seen each other for a while. Nice to see Manfred again. Just like old. So it's been Are like ten years since he's been here. Interesting. Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Okay, where's the phone? Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well, to old friends. Aww. I like how we have one for Lauren set out, but we didn't actually give it to her. <laughs> Wait, I wanted to ask him about the letter. That's definitely why we're here. Do you like it? Yes, it's beautiful. It's a Stradelli, crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Not 
anything to do with the game, but I actually own a Sorrento music box from Italy. My parents gave it to me when they went over there when I was really, really young. I think I was like maybe six or seven when they gave it to me. But it's one of the things that I made sure to keep from my childhood that um, if you guys know my past at all, you know what I've been through and how I lost a lot of my childhood stuff because of my childhood win, which was very unfortunate. Long story short, I kept this music box because it's beautiful. It's one of my memories that I actually like to keep, even though my parents got it for me, just because I loved this music box. So it kind of gave me like a chill of my spine that he was talking about. I don't know what that brand is, Stradelli or whatever I know that my music box is a Sorrento and it also has a little ballerina that sticks out of it that when you open the lid spins around wearing the same like navy blue-ish type of dress so very interesting that it looks very similar it looks kind of like a lute is on the front of this one mine's just floral flowers um, that are like kind of around in a circle but same exact kind of wood it was like a lighter more cherry wood and the inside was red velvet so it's just kind of like eerie and also kind of cool that she's so intrigued by this music box because i have one from italy just like it mm. it's one of my favorite pieces same it looks just like it it's like a red cherry wood with the ballerina oh that's so Tell strange me, Scott, what brings you back after all these years. I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Yeah, huh. I don't feel like we would be Let's going through all of this if Shelby was the killer. I just, I'm not sure. Uh, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter? Oh, sure, please. I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Especially not in front of Lauren behind this counter oh it's right here I'm just not sure thanks well let's see what this envelope has to say for itself hmm. a royal five Mm, yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Wow. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. I wonder how common they are, because maybe... Yeah, is it rare? These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. Have you ever repaired one, like Are recently? Are there many places around that could repair one of these? Oh, or that. I bought the company's entire stock as spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. Wow. <laughs> No, anybody around here who has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. Wow. You keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Oh, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Yeah, hmm. for sure. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes. They've ever I'll been be here, right then we'll the have list. that whole list of people to look at. Very interesting. Especially if they've been using it over you the past the year. Been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. For sure. We'll know when we get the list. Okay, so we're just waiting for him. It's so weird that I have this, I have this jewelry box. I don't know why it's like freaking me out so much. She's very interested in that.
Lauren thinks she's about to find the killer. I'm afraid she's going to be disappointed. What? But we're on to something with this it's whole... It's been a while since Manfred went into his office. Let's just take a look. Okay. The killer's name might be in Manfred's papers. Yeah, for sure. It's been a while since Manfred went into Wait. his office. Let's just take a look. Oh, I can't change the camera angles? Okay. Hello? Manfred! Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A oh my god! A there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? He's Hello? dead? Is there... What? There's oh a window back here. He's dead. How did they know that we were so close to getting that name? I mean, we can still look through the files. Man. He didn't deserve to go like that. But what in the world? And they called the police? So they're trying to frame us. Dang. Scott? <gasps> oh my god. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. They've already been called. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoats. We gotta get the hell out of here. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, we're a cop. We have nothing to do with this death. We were yeah. just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. True. Well, so what do we do? Uh, I don't know. I, like, w Lauren was so enthralled in that chat, in that music box, and I was too because I have the same one. But I'm not sure what, I mean, Shelby was standing there the whole time. I feel like if he would have went and, like, murdered him in that time, he wouldn't have had time to murder him, call the police, and then come back and look like, he was doing the same thing that he was doing over in that corner. I don't know what's going on. He obviously came in through the window and then murdered him and then called the police. But we were here investigating. We saw the window open. This is all very, very, very strange. How did the origami killer know that we were coming after the records here? Is he just like watching the shop, waiting for an investigator to go and look through the files? How does he have so much time on his hands? And it also kind of freaks me out just a little bit that Shelby wants to get the heck out of here right away. They're not going to spend 24 hours in a police station explaining what happened here. It would just be like a couple hours tops, especially with Shelby knowing the police force prior. I'm I'm unsure why Shelby is so quick to be like, don't you want to find John? Like, it's just, it's kind of strange that he is freaking out over this and he's not freaking out more about A, his friend being dead. He knew this guy personally. And B, that the origami killer was literally just right under our noses. Because who else would just come in here and murder this poor guy searching for a name and also we should probably look through those records if we talk to the police we would be able to report what he was looking for in the process and i highly doubt that in that very short amount of time that manfred went in here to go look for the files that the origami killer would have looked through his files and found his name and plucked it out of the stack i just find that very hard to believe look at all these filing cabinets back here there's no way that he could have just pinpointed. So I don't know what's about to happen. We're, I guess we're about to just leave, but it just feels very wrong. He's a, he's a prior police officer. Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. You better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. What? What are you doing, Lord? If someone comes in, we're going to be in trouble. These are Manfred's account books. He must have been looking for owners of royals when he was killed. Forget it. We gotta get out of here fast. Yeah, no crap. He was looking for the owner of the royals when he was killed. What? Did we just have that conversation? <laughs> that is the... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Let her sift through it. I don't know. I'm like weirded out. Wait, why are we cleaning off the phone? Wouldn't the origami killer's handprints be on there? We didn't touch that, did we? Oh yeah, I guess we did. And we touched the window.
Man, I feel strange about this. I don't know how I feel about any of this. How was he even murdered? I guess with a typewriter? Jeez. Where did we leave Prince? Gotta remember. Fast. I mean, does it matter? I'm wildly weirded out that he is so freaked out about this situation. I do not understand what is going on right now with Shelby. I don't really get why we're cleaning up fingerprints after ourselves. We're just gonna leave like nothing happened and then... I don't know. I just think it's really weird that he's so freaked out right now. Get clean Lawrence Prince too. Don't want her to be mixed up in this. I'm gonna clean up Lawrence Prince. These Please camera angles. Any I'm almost finished. All right. I guess we'll just do it. It's just so strange. Like, look at his face right now. He is so freaked out. Please will be here any second. Gotta get out now. I think my prints were also on the phone Quick. over here. Gotta find everything Lauren and I touched since we came in here. Yeah. I think that's it. I don't think I touched anything else. The glasses. The telephone. What else? Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? Yes. I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from finding us. Come on, let's go. I don't know how I feel about any of that. I didn't want to wipe up all the prints like that. I feel like... It was just handled really poorly by Shelby. I don't understand why he was freaking out so bad about any of that. So, you claim the victim was killed while you were in his shop. What? Just to go to the police station and report this? You're kidding me, right? The whole reason why we just wiped up all of our fingerprints in that place was so that we didn't have to sit at the police station office because we have to save sean i don't know i don't know what's happening right now we're just gonna keep playing it out Correct. yes he went to get something in his office a few minutes later i went in to see if he was okay that's when i found it so why the hell did we you wipe our prints immediately mr shelby would have saved us dragging your ass down here listen we had nothing to do with this murder we were only there by coincidence. I just wanted to spare myself a few hours declaring I didn't see anything to a police officer. P.I. or not, Mr. Shelby, don't leave town. And if you end up next door to any more dead bodies, remember to call us. Okay? I don't know, guys. Shelby's weird. Shelby weirds me out don't really well, well, know what Scott the heck Shelby. that was all about you in trouble again in trouble again wrong time wrong place you know what it's like don't sweat it i'll take care of it for old time's sake thanks carter i owe you one Are you on to anything at the moment well i Got some ideas. Nothing concrete. Well, if it goes beyond the idea stage, you tell me about it, wouldn't you, Scott? 
sure. What an interesting encounter. What were they previously partners? Where are we going? Also kind of funny seeing Blake and Shelby, my two main suspects right now, talking to one another and being super weird with one another. That was a very strange situation. As far as everything that went down in Manfred's shop, I don't like it. I feel like Shelby had no reason to wipe the fingerprints off of everything, knowing that he's a police officer and a private investigation and private investigator. Sure, his prints might have been on the phone and on the window, but so could have the origami killer's prints. So why this act of we have to save time by not getting caught here with the police? He could have just put his report in with the police at that at that place. And then they would have taken him down and probably had the same quick conversation. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time by end of the day. Thank you for the report. Don't leave town. Instead, we went through all of these loopholes, wiping down all of our fingerprints. Oh, I don't understand why we just did all of that. It seemed very sketchy. I'm just very weirded out by all of it. I don't understand what Shelby is going after right now. Taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We're partners, remember? We had a deal. Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer, but you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. Well, then you can find him without. I refuse to be responsible for anything that goes wrong. Stop the car. What? Stop the fucking car! Whoa! Lady! Jeez! Get out. I'm trying to pull something like You're that. I'll do it on my own. Fine, bye. Try to get us both killed. Also kind of strange how in the shop right before Manfred got murdered, we hit the Lauren prompt and he was saying she's not going to catch the killer. That's uh, like what, however he worded it. I, I said it after, like, what do you mean we're not going to catch the killer? We're getting these logs. Also, did she take those logs from Manfred's shop? And if not, why not? I feel like she should have grabbed the books and been looking through them in this car ride versus arguing with Shelby. Also, why didn't Shelby mention any of this typewriter stuff to the police? How he was there searching for the records and maybe you should look at the records to Blake. Why didn't he give that to Blake? Unless we're gonna go back back there and get the records and look at them for ourselves but it's probably a crime scene city right now of fingerprinting and all of that stuff so i'm not sure what happened to those records if they're forever lost or what's gonna happen with all of that but it's just it's so unfortunate that a really heavy piece of information that obviously the origami killer knew would put him in the spotlight is now missing slash gone slash not on anyone's radar. Unfortunate. Crap, I have no choice. I guess I'm doing this to protect him. It's all my fault. I should never have let her come with me. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. Is she just standing in front of the car? Let's go get her. Lauren! What is she doing? This girl's stubborn as a mule. Yeah. She doesn't let up. I miss him. I miss him so much. Do anything to hold him once again in my arms.
I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have talked to you like that. It's just that I wouldn't want to see you get hurt. I can get why having her around would be really scary for Shelby because I mean his friend just got murdered right in front of him so what if it was Lauren Thursday 11 15 a.m 3.366 inches uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Yeah. Is this what the guy? Oh, fuck. I said a thousand times that I don't want any junkies at all. If you want to score, man, you gotta fucking call first. Come on. Beat it. So he's a drug dealer. Fuck! Are you deaf or what? I said get out of here. You're gonna cost me trouble, and I don't like trouble. Fuck off! <sighs> hey, take it easy, man. Uh, huh? Keep cool. So he's a drug dealer. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? Dope? Money? We could kill a drug dealer Tell for our son, need. but I'm sure we can make a deal. I don't want. Huh? I don't want Ethan to be a murderer. <gasps> I'm gonna throw your brains out, you son of a bitch! Shotgun? <laughs> oh! You think this is coming to my house? Let's get my dope. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did he shoot us? Holy crap. Oh my god. This guy is nuts. He's out of bullets. Out of bullets. Hold it, man. I give you whatever you want. Got dope? Got cash? You you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. Oh no. It's my girl, see. This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. Oh no. Please, man. I wanna see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't want Ethan to be a killer. I don't think that he needs to have that on his plate. I mean, look at what he's already been through in these trials to get Sean back. And now if we end up doing all of these trials, he's going to live with this the rest of his life. Yes, he will have Sean back, hopefully. But at what cost? I don't know if... He's already having so many psychotic episodes and breaks and issues mentally that I feel like him killing somebody would just make that even worse. Putting myself into Ethan's shoes, though. If I knew that my daughter was taken, which I tried not to put myself in these people's shoes because I can't handle it emotionally. 
I'm strong enough to admit that. I cannot handle putting myself into Ethan's shoes. I've been going around tiptoeing around getting to know these characters internally because I don't want to go there. This situation is making me go there. I'm thinking about if we pull the gun back, Sean's dead. But if we shoot this guy, regardless of if he's a drug dealer with kids or if he's the most important man in the world or if he's nobody, if we shoot this guy, we get closer to Sean. And I don't love the answer because I don't want you guys to take it the wrong way. But if I've already been through these three very heinous challenges and made it out on the other end, and I know that the water is getting deeper and deeper and that I don't have much time left and that I could lose my family because I didn't pull the trigger in this moment, then I would never be able to live with myself even more than I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I killed this man. They're both they're both very heavy things to carry for the rest of your life. If you don't shoot the guy, then you don't get Sean. If you shoot the guy, then you live with shooting him, but you get closer to getting Sean. I hate that he has like that he has kids and we're sitting in the kids room and if we splatter brains all over this kids room they're gonna have to live with that the rest of their life doesn't matter that he's that this dad is selling drugs on the side and having junkies come to his door and he's having an operation running outside of a place where he keeps his children which is bad enough but these kids would forever be be altered by this moment in their life but I have to think about I have to think about Sean. I have to think about him right now. And I feel like if we fail this task, then I don't think we're going to get Sean back. The police are already on our tail. We have one more trial after this. One more. <sighs> I'm a father too. <laughs> but I have no choice. In the gun grip, it's always hidden in the most obvious places. Jeez. How? How is it in here? If this is a most recent video, how? How did he get it in here? Origami figure. One more trial, and I'll know where you are, Sean. My God, he's going under, and the damn rain just keeps falling. I'll get you out of that well, Sean. I'll come save you, and I'll hold you in my arms again, and never let go. I'm sorry. We had to be a shark. We had to be a shark for Sean.
Thursday, 1.32 p.m., 3.434 inches. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. So what are we looking for? There's someone that's selling prescribed medicine. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. Oh. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. So he could say who rented it out, but I mean, if it was burned down, then why? Gotta find some way to get him to talk about the Marble Street apartment. Oh, so he actually owns it still. So maybe he knows someone that rented it. I'm gonna act all doped up. I hope he goes for the bait. Okay, and we're gonna look, seem like we're looking for drugs. Okay. He sells prescription medicine to like just anybody. Okay. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get bitropin without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Wait. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear. Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. Mm, no. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. Mm, I don't know. He's kind of creepy. I don't really like him that much. I don't think... Okay. It's kind of weird that he's not taking no for an answer. I haven't seen you around. That whiskey label looks very similar to one I've seen in Detroit. I could just be seeing things, but I feel like it's the one that um, Hank used to drink. I found here before. Who told you about me? I don't know. It's probably just similar. Who told you about me? Uh, big. I can't remember. My brain's fried with all these pills. Yeah. Can't tell Dave from night half the time. Client apartment medicine? Yeah, medicine? Can you get other types of medicine? Why is he looking at the glass like that? I don't know what Everything this is. Everything a price, my dear. But I'm what sketched about out. You? Do you have a price? Forget it. I'm not for sale. What? I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. Well, he drank it, so I guess it's not poisoned. He's just being a weirdo. You're not drinking? No, I told you no. Why is he being um, so weird about this? Um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty.
Okay, I'm definitely not drinking that now. It won't be a moment. That was Wait. weird. Okay, God let's look creeps. around. Yeah. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. For sure gives me the creeps, man. Quick. I gotta find something. All right, let's look around. He seemed to be upset that I wouldn't drink. Yeah. Looks like he retired a bunch of medical supplies on his way out. There's enough sleeping pills here to knock out an army. Jeez. Okay, so just pills in there. Bathroom? I don't think there'll be much in here, huh? What are we even looking for right now? I don't think we're gonna find it in the bathroom. Did we look over by the door? I feel like we didn't really look over by the door. Can we look in the dresser? No, okay. We're just like skipping right over it. What did that say? Paco? Blue Lagoon? Don't make a sound. He's near. Wait, what's in that? Surgical gowns? I thought he stopped performing operations. Must be some kind of a weird nostalgia for the past. That's weird. Could the doc be the origami killer? Maybe. He's acting There's really weird. About the way he looks. Yeah, he's definitely creepy. All right. Maybe a quick look behind those doors. Okay, so there's nothing over me. on this side of the room. Oh, wait, there's stuff on the table. Look. Medical book. Nothing legible. Okay. So nothing for us. Let's see if we can make it to that back room. Is there anything in here? Let's see. Yeah, it's that Kentucky seems Bourbon. To be interested in property, amongst other things. Okay. Yeah, I got. I swear that's like the same whiskey label that I've seen in Hank's house from Detroit. Ah! <laughs> little ferret. We're gonna have some fun together, my darling. I promise. <laughs> what? What's happening? Oh my god, it's a dead body! Ah! Say hello to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another census? one of those goddamn government spies. Oh my god. So oh my god. You're interested you in my Marble up. Street apartment. I rented it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> to be honest, I don't give a damn, because as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. What in the world? But enough with the there has to be a way for us to escape, right? I miss surgery, you see, so I take every. There's nothing over there. A chair? I don't oh my have God. any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you uh, won't hold that against me. What the hell? Hold on. This might sting him. Um. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? I can't get out of this? Where's that going? Have you ever noticed? As soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling. I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Oh my god, I Don't thought move. he was about to kill Don't us. <sighs> okay, we have time to escape now. We have to be fast. We have to look around. Look. Okay, shake. Thank God someone came to the door. Oh, jeez. Hello, sir. 
I come to bring you the word of the Lord in the form of these magnificent. Oh, wow, items, what a guardian angel in this time of need. In return for a contribution of only five dollars. No thanks, I'm not. Oh, oh shoot. I do not believe the word of the Lord is of no interest to you. We so... humble flock to walk in okay. the for St. John has said. Uh, thanks a lot, but I don't need it. Fuck. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. He's coming back. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. We got this. No wrong movements. Oh no! Holy crap! That laugh. I couldn't see that one. Oh no. Did I fail? <laughs> oh my god, I thought you were dead! Oh my god! I thought I missed too many buttons. That scared me so bad. I thought we murdered, we murdered her. Thursday, 2.18 p.m., 3.5 inches. I need a second after that. That was, that was so much. <laughs> Someone named Paco was renting out the apartment. We did see the, um, the piece of, I guess it was like a business card for the Blue Lagoon that had Paco written on the other side of it. So I'm guessing that's good that we found that information. I, I just can't get over the fact how I thought she was dead. I thought we for sure killed her. And I'm just really glad that we only missed a few and we were able to get, get back. It, it looked like she was absolutely just knocked out there. It was very scary. Jew, okay, I'm feeling better now. I've taken some deep breaths, <laughs> drink some tea. I'm feeling much better. So, I don't know how any of this is lining up anymore. Not sure who Paco is. Not sure who that crazy guy that did, does surgery on the side and just gives away pills has anything to do with what's going on here. Other than he's a crazy old dude. If the killer is renting from him, he probably chose him because he knows how psychotic he is and that he wouldn't rat out any of his clients or people that he rents out to because he's got enough to answer for himself. I'm not sure if Paco could potentially be our killer or if it's just a hidden name that he gave him the name Paco and he doesn't actually know who the heck he's dealing with. But either way, we could maybe find out more at this Blue Lagoon place. 
it's very sketchy, but also admirable that Madison is going through these links to try to find the killer for Ethan. She knows how much trouble Ethan's in. She picks him up and dusts him off and hides him from the police. Madison is really just Ethan's guardian angel right now. I feel like she's putting herself out there into these awful situations that could potentially get her killed. All for Ethan, it's it's just, it's very admirable and I don't understand the underlying reason why she would be doing this out of the kindness of her heart other than she sees how much Ethan's suffering and wants to find out if Ethan could actually be the killer. It's almost like she's trying to figure out the murder mystery for him and kind of clear his name for him because I don't honestly believe that Madison would go out of her way to help Ethan so much if she thought for sure 100% that he was the killer. I feel like she's where my mindset is. She knows Ethan, she sees him, and she is connecting to him in a very interesting way because she sees how much he's struggling and she knows who he is. He's all over the news. He was all over the news with the with the disappearance of Sean. So things are, they're just getting so heated in this episode. There have been so many times where I've held my breath, I'm sweating, I'm unsure of the next move or what is going on. It just goes to show you how awesome this game is. I know that it's dark. I know that it's deep. I know that these elements are really heavy hence the name heavy rain you can't deny how how interesting this game is and the need to find the killer and the need to save sean i've done things in this game that i wouldn't imagine doing in other games because usually my game style is more on the good versus evil route and this game has tested me in ways that I didn't even see coming at all. Didn't think that I would ever pull a trigger on an innocent person like that. No way in other games would I have ever even considered that. But this game does a great job at making the priority for Ethan to just beeline to Sean. No matter what happens, no matter what you have to do as a parent to get your kid out of that storm drain that's filling up with water every single video that we keep getting closer and closer to him, I it's enough to drive you crazy as a parent. I couldn't even imagine. So all of this just to say that I feel like this game is very well done. For an older game with the graphics sometimes not looking amazing, but just kind of sticking it out and the controls not being polished. All of that aside, this game is great. I'm thinking in ways that I would have never thought before. I'm doing things that I would have never even imagined myself doing. Needed a quick breather there. After that one with Madison, I, I for sure thought that we got her murdered. Okay, so I guess we're talking to that Mad Jack person. I think his name was Mad Jack. Interesting. We took the glasses, but not the gun. Isn't he like a criminal? A really scary criminal? Mad Jack is suspected of stealing the car I'm looking for. Might be worth asking him a few questions. Feeling sick, got the sweats, hands are shaking. Hope this works out all right. He'll be okay. Blake wasn't in the office when I left. Don't think I'm gonna miss him. That's nice. At least we get a break from Blake. A scrapyard. Good a place as any to tinker with stolen cars. True. Tuba trips came. Got it in my pocket. Wait, I wanted to see what it was, what he was going to say about Sean. 24 hours. I've got less than 24 hours if I want to find Sean Mars still okay. alive. So I'm guessing he's up in here. Can you stop that thing? He looks mad that we're here. Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? I'm listening. Can we go inside? Mad Jack, a.k.a. Jackson Neville. This guy's got a criminal record as long as my arm. Better be careful. Dang. This is one fucked up sort of place. I'll question Neville and get the hell out of here. Can we go back and, like, grab our gun? Just be like, we need something real quick. 
the way he is talking about him, I'm surprised he didn't grab his gun. I guess we're just asking questions, but... I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from you. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. <laughs> you trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. Mm. The blue Chevrolet is my only lead. Not much help, this so-called Mad Jack. He's either clean as a whistle, or else he's got something to hide. I don't trust this guy. All right. Well, the office was over here. Maybe... Oh, well. There's a lot here. I doubt this guy would keep records hmm. on... Not oh. I'm looking for. Oh, okay. I thought it said the Chevrolet. Size yeah. 13. Must be Matt Jack's size. Okay. What are these? Size 10. Most likely a visitor. Intuition? Feeling? There's got to be something here. I bet my life on it. Intuition? Feeling? <sighs> I'm wasting my time. After all, this guy's probably got nothing to do with the killer. Same brand of tire as the car I'm looking for. Oh. Is the killer's car being here? Interesting. What was that? Was this what he was looking at? Do I just scan? Fingerprints. Probably Mad Jacks. Jackson Neville? Okay. So why did it want me to come over here? Gary comment. Traces of orchid pollen in the air inside oh, the garage. Oh, whoa. Orchid pollen? So the killer's definitely been up in here. The same model, the same tire. Interesting. He's probably gonna get mad that we're like snooping around out here. What's this? Mm, more of his. Okay. I'm surprised he hasn't come in and been like, "Why Two are you looking around?" Paint. Same tire tracks. No doubt about it. The killer's car was here. So it was painted blue. That's actually really helpful. For sure, helpful. What's all this? Maybe just more of like the orchid pollen or something. More of that belonged to Mad Jack. So he's the only one that did work on it. So he it, he knows who we're talking about. If he did work for the car and he painted it blue, the person's been here. Seems pretty like recently too. Is there something in the, like this trash can area? No. What's this? More that belonged to him. Okay, so nothing. I feel like this is all just like a waste of time. 
What's this? Blood. Now why is there blood here? Blood? Um... Do we look at these footprints? Size 10. Most likely a visitor. Okay, so the same, like, size 10. Man, there's a lot of... car either. Oh, okay. There's a lot of evidence in here for the killer was probably in here. But why is there blood? There's... The blood tracks lead to the acid bath. Acid? Someone dragged something? Wait. What? Was it the size 13 shoe or the size 10 shoe that drug it here? Why isn't he saying? <gasps> A skull. We need to get out of here. Is he behind us? One of your cop buddies asking too many questions. I had to solder up his little mouth. Is he talking about Blake? Did he murder Blake? Is that why Blake wasn't in the office when we left? Oh no. Hands on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Oh Let's just no. Get you out of How sight could I have fallen for it so easily? Idiot. Fucking idiot. Oh no. Oh. Oh no, my glasses. Oh crap. Oh no. Jeez. Come on, get up. Get your gun. Get his gun. No. Oh, we got it. Enough fucking around. You're going to tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. Hit. Impress. Damn. Oh. You out of your motherfucking mind, man? <laughs> oh, shit, Jack. Ain't nothing to it. Just a little bit of self-defense. Page <laughs> one of the police manual. Kill or be killed. I thought whoa, whoa, whoa. we Stop were going to do words. I'm starting to remember some things. Oh. You, you be cool. I'll tell you the tale. No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car. Get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash. And I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was... Supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything? Oh no, not right now. Oh, shit, not now. Anything you say Come on, can dude. and will be. Hey, <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. Oh my god, this is scary. Stop. Stop! <laughs> what? They letting you dope heads in the FBI now? God bless America. No! Yeah, I don't want to... <clears throat> oh, jeez. I'm going to give you a little help with your drug problem, Mr. Five-O. Permanently. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Um. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Freaking cops! Can't get out like that! Oh my god! What are we gonna do? Come on, come on. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> A gun? Oh yeah, our gun. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oh my god. Norman to make it. <laughs> Jeez. He got stuck. everyone i'm gonna stop here for the day because honestly i don't think that my fingers or my arms or my heart can take any more for the day there have been so many close calls where players that we've been playing could have died multiple times today so i'm definitely going to take a deep breather today after i get off and have a nice cup of tea because today's episode was absolutely wild on our suspect list right now i feel like we have a lot of people that could potentially be the killer now that we're talking about paco and other people that are coming in the whole kramer thing i'm not sure if we're even playing 
the killer at this point. We could just be blindsided and it could be one of the kids that was invited over to Jason's birthday party that we never got to see. I don't know. It could be anybody at this point is my main point. Do I still think that it could be Shelby? Yes, I do. I think that the way that he responded during Manfred was very strange. I don't understand why he was so adamant about cleaning his fingerprints off of everything. Being an investigator and after going to the police station, after clearing off your fingerprints on everything and being like, hey, we were there when the murder took place. It's just very, very weird. And when he was going through like wiping everything down so frantically, it weirded me out. It just weirded me out that everything that we touched, he had to clean up. He didn't go for the files that Lauren had scattered on the ground. I feel like if he was trying to solve this case, he would have told Lauren, yes, pick those up, take them with us, we're gonna go. Instead, he ran around so frantically, cleaning up all the fingerprints everywhere and didn't think to grab the files. And then come to find out that he knows Blake, he asked him if he's up to trouble again, saying that he's at the wrong place at the wrong time, like usual, and then Blake saying, yeah, I'll clean it up for you again. So maybe they're in on it together maybe blake could be the killer but i'm thinking that in this mad jack situation that might be the end of blake he said a cop guy your cop buddy was coming looking around and the only people that are on this case that would have gone to mad jack before norman is either Blake or the chief. And the chief is not gonna take a phone call down here and go to this bulldozer yard with a very angry fugitive that is doing some sketchy stuff. He has a very big rap sheet. Everyone that we interrogated so far has either tried to murder us, beat us up, or run away. And it's just looking very strange. A lot of trials today that I did not think that I would ever be doing in a game or even going through with in my gameplay. I did not think I was gonna be able to do what I did in the lizard. It sits heavy with me, but what we did in the shark trial, I feel like it had to be done. And it's unfortunate what Ethan has had to go through just to get closer to Sean, but in his shoes, I understand it. I understand how he is in such a manic state right now that he will literally cut off his finger and shoot somebody in the head to get his son back. That is the point that Ethan has reached. But we will see what happens in the next episode when we uncover the last origami piece that Ethan has to do the trial for. I can't even imagine what this last trial could entail knowing everything and doing everything that we have done so far with poor Ethan. So thank you all for joining me today and I look forward to the next episode after a much needed break from this game and a good disconnect and a cup of tea. <laughs> but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.